Hello, everybody. So 2021 represents Tomb Raider's 25th anniversary. Now, we here at the Brotherhood of Gaming.com have done plenty of Tomb Raider stuff over the years, from game reviews to full-length commentaries. Hell, we even did a Tomb Raider timeline. It's funny how Crystal Dynamics wants to unify the Tomb Raider timelines. <laughs> well, we did it first. Personally, becoming a Tomb Raider fan for me was a bit of a no-brainer. I was a huge Indiana Jones fan when I was a kid, and this series was pretty much that, just with a sassy Englishwoman bearing dual pistols instead of a whip. Hell, I even shared the same birthday as Lara Croft. Because of the 25th anniversary, I still want to do something to acknowledge it, because 25th anniversaries don't come around often. Therefore, I decided to do a review of my favorite Tomb Raider game, Tomb Raider Legend. Now, the overall feeling of this game in the Tomb Raider community is polarizing at best. Many people love this game, including me, but plenty of others see it as the downfall of the Tomb Raider series in general. It was the first Tomb Raider game made by Crystal Dynamics and is seen as the legit beginning of the split in the fandom. But like I said, Tomb Raider Legend is my favorite Tomb Raider game, and I felt like discussing it. So, without further ado, my name is Eugene Morris of TheBrotherHoodAgaming.com, and here's my review of Tomb Raider Legend. When Lara Croft was a mere child, she was returning home with her mother when their plane crashed in Nepal. Lara and her mom were the only survivors, and eventually made their way to a cave, when they discovered a strange ancient device. Lara accidentally activates it, which causes her mom to disappear, leaving her all alone. Fast forward many years later, and Lara is the budding Tomb Raider. While getting a tip-off, she heads to Bolivia looking for a certain artifact. After some run-ins with some goons, she meets up with an American playboy, James Rutland. Through this confrontation, she learns that her old colleague Amanda Everett is still alive, whom she had thought had died years ago. Suddenly it becomes a race to discover and reforge the ancient sword, the Excalibur, which could be the only way for Laura to bring back her mother. Now the main crux of the story that many old school fans of the core design series have an issue with is the fact that Laura's motivations are closely tied to her father's. After his wife vanished, Sir Richard Croft spent the rest of his life looking for her to no avail, which also led to his death. Laura picked up his quest after he was gone. To many in the community, this act would rob Laura of her agency as she would now be motivated by her dad instead of becoming a Tomb Raider by her own designs like in the original series. Now, to be honest, I do see why so many have an issue with that. Laura did feel more like her own person in the first series of games because she survived a plane crash by herself, made it out of the Himalayas by herself, and instantly fell in love with action and adventure by herself. This timeline tries to make her motivations of becoming a Tomb Raider more intimate and personal, which is being directly connected to her parents. And I'm sorry if you disagree, but I'm totally fine with that. Many children follow their parents' footsteps and go into the family business, and this is what this feels like. The story gives Laura more of a relatable personality, in my opinion. Most children care for their parents, so this change of direction for Laura never really bothered me. Despite that, however, Laura Croft is still every bit of badass as she's always been, as this game does feature some of my favorite one-liners in the series. Isn't she beautiful? I'm falling in love all over again. It doesn't matter. What's important is what it does. Do you know? What I know is my business. Those bastards from town are here, and they're coming down after you. Well, this is a tomb. I'll make them feel at home. Miss Croft, are you deaf? I don't know. Let's see. Try begging for your life like you did the last time we spoke. Laura still retains that cocky, carefree attitude that is showed with the playful banter with the enemies in the game. The additions of Zip and Alistair as major characters in this game are also controversial as well. I know many fans are used to seeing Lara Croft go it alone, but having her own crew assisting her, again, allows for more personality and expands the Tomb Raider world a bit. Now, for the most part, I did enjoy their banter back and forth in Laura's headset. Now, there were times, admittedly, in later parts of the game where it did get a little annoying. But in the end, the voice acting in this game is top-notch. The story is not too long either. You could probably beat it in a couple of sittings, as it is one of the shorter Tomb Raider games. It feels more like an elongated movie or miniseries, and it has that cinematic feeling. For someone like me, this kind of makes Legend the type of game I enjoy going back to. It's not too long, and not too short. Just right to get that Tomb Raider fix. 
So with Crystal Dynamics taking the reins of the Tomb Raider series, it seems like the first call of action was to take Lara off the grid. And that's exactly what was done here, almost to perfection. I really love the way that Lara moves in this game, as for the first time, she actually feels like an athletic gymnast. Lara jumps, flips, and moves around very fluidly as she interacts with the environments. The game is your basic third-person action platformer that features Lara jumping and climbing from one area to another. If she ends up jumping a bit early, you will get prompted to press the triangle button to grab onto certain objects. Also, when jumping from object to object, Lara will automatically grab items and hang from them. Well, most of the time. There will be bits where she looks like she's in range, but for whatever reason, she doesn't make a grab and you end up falling to your death. And that's not fun. Now, there are many areas that will require you to do some puzzle solving. The environment will give you clues on what to move in order to activate to get through. Now, none of the puzzles here are really all that taxing, and they are pretty straightforward, and they won't take you long to figure out. Now, for the most part, you'll be shooting things with guns. You have your dual pistols with your infinite ammo, which is a must, but you can also gather up automatic pistols, shotguns, and even grenades. Later, you will get the sword, but I won't get too much into that because I want to avoid spoilers. Other helpful equipment includes an automatic light source for those dark areas, and a grappling hook for grabbing things from afar, swinging from objects, and pulling people towards you. To elaborate on this further, the combat of this game is pretty much this. Step 1, run around. Step 2, shoot, shoot, and shoot some more. Now, to their credit, they did try to expand the action by giving Laura more of a move set. For example, she can slide into enemies, do a sidekick, and do a jump off Matrix style attacks, but honestly, they're not necessary. Fun, but not necessary. Just run, shoot, and keep yourself tapped up with health packs. Every once in a while, the game will shake things up with a motorcycle level. Many have down opinions on this part game as the bike can be a little loose control, and again, you are just shooting enemies as you head straight for a target. I still find these levels enjoyable, as they did add to that cinematic feel of the game. And those ragdoll effects are just too adorable. They did bring back the bike for Tomb Raider Underworld. But one thing they didn't bring back, however, was the quick time events. There will be some sequences in which you'll have to press the right button in order to avoid a grisly end. I was never really a fan of these areas. There is a time and a place for quick time events, but not in my Tomb Raiding. A nice side event in this game is Lara's Mansion, which was inspired by the Lara Croft Tomb Raider movies. You can run around as Lara, interact with the crew to find treasures and solve puzzles. You can find treasures all over this game, in fact, in order to unlock things like costumes, cinematics, and other fun easter eggs. Honestly, I think the gameplay portion of Tomb Raider Legend was exactly what the Tomb Raider series needed. It did not try to reinvent the wheel, it just polished up that classic Tomb Raider gameplay and gave it a much needed update. The Tomb Raider music has always been iconic. The music of this game perfectly represents its heroine. It's classy and feminine, but has plenty of kick-ass moments. For example, I love that motorcycle chase thing from the Kazakhstan level. It's full of adrenaline, and it's one that I replay in my earphones from time to time. Also, I would like to give some love to the opening sequence, which, watching it again, I couldn't help but chuckle. Yeah, it's just so delightfully cheesy, as it's essentially a Lara Croft version of a James Bond opening. Good stuff. The version I played for this review was the remastered version that appeared on the PlayStation 3 as part of the Tomb Raider Legacy package. So the graphics are slightly polished up. With that being said, I still think the graphics from the original game still hold up nicely. There are some walking moments like Laura's model not having any toes and whatnot, but still overall Laura is very nice on the eyes. What's also nice on the eyes as well are the environments that are all wonderfully rendered. From tombs in Bolivia, the abandoned towns in Peru, the skyscrapers of Japan, and so on and so forth. You need some great places to explore if you're going to make a game like this. The environments of Tomb Raider Legends hits the mark. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy or a sell? A more personal story that updates Lara Croft. Fun yet repetitive gameplay that takes it off the grid. Nice graphics and music to complement it. There has been so many Tomb Raider games released over the past 25 years, each with their own fan base that speaks to them. Every Tomb Raider fan has their own favorite game, and when it comes to that, there really is no wrong answers. I enjoy Tomb Raider Legend, as to me, it's the quintessential Tomb Raider experience. It's just the right length, with a great version of Lara Croft that is both relatable and awesome, along with beautiful music, graphics, and tons of replayability. 
Now please understand, I'm not trying to change anyone's minds or trying to start any fights here. If you do not like Tomb Raider Legend, well that's fine. In the end, we're all Tomb Raider fans, and we're all allowed to have our own opinions. Hopefully, through Crystal Dynamics attempting to unify the timelines, they can unify the fan base as well. It might be a bit naive for me to think that's possible, but it would be a nice gesture nonetheless. Now it's your turn. What's your favorite Tomb Raider game and why? Let me know in the comments below. You've been watching TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and remember, as always, keep on gaming.